So this is just a short note about our ideal generalizations, especially on the tanks in series section, where in the, the main video, we had developed the tanks in series model. And there was a certain point that clarifies many issues in the section, which I forgot to make. So we had done all this derivation and we showed that as you increase the number of tanks, your system moves closer and closer to the spike. But I forgot to describe why this is exactly. So why is it that as we increase n, we start to see more and more plug flow-like behavior? And the reason is, uh, or, or can be described by thinking about the picture that we had produced at the beginning. So we said we had a certain real reactor system. And as we increased n, we were increasing the number of zones uh, in that reactor. And in this case, we had started speculating that maybe there were three mixes, and, and so there were three mix zones. Well, you don't need to have mixes in your system before uh, you start seeing mixed zones. So it could be that even without these mixes, that you have three uh, mix zones, or that the fluid starts to behave as if there are three mixed zones. And if you think of it, as you increase n, you are increasing the number of mixed zones. And our observation has been that as we increased n to crazy high numbers, we are getting closer and closer to something like a spike. And that spike was centered on the space time of the reactor. Now here, if you increase n to very large numbers, then you see we have uh, many, many well mixed zones. So if you increase n to say 100, then you have 100 tiny little mixed zones here. And so you see, as you are increasing n, you are getting zones that are small and well mixed. And in other words, those are behaving like little plugs. So that's how and why we are starting to see plug flow like behavior. By increasing n, we are partitioning this uh, fluid into specific small regions. And that's the same as the definition of a plug. We said a plug was um, a fluid element or a, a, a body of fluid which didn't interact with any other fluid. That we drew a plug with a double line and we said that plug of fluid didn't interact, it didn't diffuse material uh, before or after itself. So. So now by creating n uh, at increasing numbers, we are crea creating more and more of these zones. And so each zone can be regarded as its own plug. In other, way, uh, yeah, in other words, we found a way to, uh, to create plugs uh, by partitioning our CSTR. So that's loosely what's happening. And there are a couple of things um, to, to uh, make that more formalized. Um, number one, uh, I didn't go back to this note here about, uh, yeah, in, in the section. I, I think I'd said I would come back to it, but I forgot to do so um, in the original video. Well, we had done this derivation and we showed for n tanks in series, we could rewrite it in terms of um, uh, tau i. So we said tau i was the space time in one plug of uh, fluid elements. Well, in this note, we are pointing out that uh, tau i is, of course, vi over q. But vi, which is the partitioned volume, can also be estimated by dividing the real volume, the total real volume, by the number of partitions, so uh, or the number of uh, partitioned zones. So v naught over n is equal to vi. And so we could rewrite this if we look at this, you can see here it's V naught over Q. So V naught over Q is tau naught. So it's tau naught over N. So tau I equals tau naught over N. And so if you substitute, instead of using tau I here, you can write um, tau naught over N. In other words, you could rewrite this as N to the power N and then the rest is the same. Right, so we can rewrite our um, our RTD for the nth um, for the nth partition. So we can write the space time of the ith, uh, of of any of those partitions in terms of the overall space time divided by the number of partition zones. And so 
that means that our space, as we increase n, we are making uh, the volume smaller and smaller. So as n goes off to infinity, uh, v goes to zero. In other words, we are getting closer and closer to a perfect plug. And you can see that here, as, uh, as this value n increases, we are getting closer and closer to a perfect plug here. So it's going to become narrower and narrower and taller and taller. And so we are getting closer to a Dirac Delta spike. Now, it's important to note here, the, the reason that I've introduced this note is because now we have this expression written in terms of the overall space-time. So here it's written in terms of the individual space-times. So if you have a small reactor, then you have um, a, a small tau i. So tau i is the individual volume divided by the, the total flow rate. So tau i becomes small as n becomes large. But now we've gone and rewritten that in terms of overall uh, tau naught. So you can see here there's tau naught. And so that tau naught, which is the real volume divided by the real uh, volumetric flow rate, that shows up here as the central point of the spike. So this is very much looking like um, the plug flow spike. And another way to see this is by referring back to notes 05 where we were looking at the Levenspiel plots. So remember, if we were considering some overall conversion shown here by X3, that the CSTR was, uh, that the CSTR would show up here in, in this block. But as we uh, partitioned the volume, and let's say here we took uh, three partitions, then uh, we had a reduced required volume because we were moving closer and closer to this curve. Now, as you keep increasing n, again, you get closer and closer to the curve. So you you get closer and closer to just the area under this curve. In other words, you get closer and closer to the volume of a PFR. So once again, as you increase n, you are becoming closer and closer to plug flow-like behavior. So that's the reason that we uh, start to observe that we become like a plug here. Um, as we increase uh, n, we increase the number of plugs, we, uh, we increase the partitioning of the system. In other words, the fluid is becoming more and more segregated. So that's the physical intuition or the physical reasoning behind this ability to transition from um, the, the perfectly mixed exponential decay and the perfectly unmixed uh, Dirac Delta spike. So n becomes this parameter that helps us transition between those two, and hence it becomes a parameter that helps us establish a connection to a real-world type of mixing.